Hello, and today we're back on track with Hummingbird, a song that I'm getting quite excited about. Been a lot of uh, work since the last episode. Um, I'll embed a link for you to go and have a look at that. But there has been quite a lot of work in quite a lot of different respects. Um, I've updated the lyrics and I'm much happier with them. The, they might actually be done, in fact. And if you head over to my website, you'll be able to, uh, to download them and have a look at, uh, at where we stand. But obviously you'll hear them as the song plays. And there's been a hell of a lot of work on the harmony. Uh, we've done a lot of recording of harmonies. There are still more to be done. And the song is completely unmixed. So at the moment it's still in a pretty raw form. But I want you to hear the harmonies as they stand at the moment. Which is nearly all there. I've completely re-recorded the bass line. We've got some juicy guitar solos uh, in there, which again, I'm quite pleased about. And, and all in all, this, is, this has now become my favourite piece of music that I've done. Anyway, no more teasing. Let's have a listen to it, and then we'll come back and, and see what, uh, what's changed. <laughs> So lots happened. 
uh, particularly happy with the guitar solos they're pretty good they m I might re-record them one more time um, I'm a little bit unhappy with my decision to end both solos the, the, the one in the middle of the song and the one at the end with slide downs um, it, it, it feels a little bit cheesy to me now and I might either just try and chop them hard chop them to take that, that slide away or I might re-record them because I really enjoy playing them and I think they could be a little bit better but but generally um, I think it's really added the extra dimension to the song that, that it needed done some work on the rhythm um, added extra punch at the end if I just solo the rhythm um, just briefly uh, when we get towards the end of the song we've got quite a pulsing thing going on And it really helps um, heighten the energy towards the end of the song in conjunction with the solo. I think it's good. The one part of the um, we've got all of these harmonies laid in. In fact, let's let's just have a quick look at the harmonies. Unmute everything. E and they are here. So it's these six tracks. Now at the end of the song, when we're playing the solo, there are no harmonies. That's the bit that that's the extra bit that I need to add in. But for the rest of the song we do and um, I think Pauline's done a, a wonderful job I'm really really happy with them if I just unmute the main vocal as, as well I in the sky these echoes of Eden that's so so high yeah very very nice indeed now I need to again find a place where all of these harmonies sit in the mix. I need to make sure that the main vocal is much more prominent and they kind of bed themselves down so they're not really smacking you in the face but doing the job that I want them to. So um, there is mixing work to be done the there. Thrill, the hummingbird flies and in a blur of rainbow tones he skitters and dies. really really happy so that's a big change that's a, a quantum leap for me I'm starting to starting to get to grips with what I'm supposed to do uh, in order to make harmony sound good this all of this stuff at the, the beginning all of these these were um, an experiment that at the moment I've not done anything with these are lots of single note oohs and ahs and I basically just got her to play some firsts and uh, roots and fifths and whatever we've got in there I, I don't think that's the way to go with harmony I think it it's just better to figure out what I want her to sing and just actually do it live on the track then you get the transitions if, if I know it's going to go from ah the, 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 the descent from one note to the next is important and just having static I wanted to add this idea of having a static sample bank of, of tones that I could basically just like a, a, a Pauline VST really that I could play and, um, and and key those notes in whenever I wanted there might still be legs in the idea um, but it's actually easier just to just to ask her to to sing extra stuff in like for the solo at the end once I've figured out what those notes are going to be just 10 minutes it really takes to just do these do these lines get a couple of versions you'll see that I've got two versions of each harmony at the moment everything's centered because I've not started mixing at all but ultimately they'll start sitting in the stereo space and really filling out the sound hopefully so that's all very exciting. Um, Omnisphere is a recent addition to my VST library and my god it's magnificent and it really helps just to have when I'm 
when, when I'm writing the guide vocals for Pauline to sing to actually have um, oohs and ahs that I can I can record in and then she knows exactly what I want it to sound like so that's that's been a, a big addition to the arsenal um, I've barely scratched the surface of Omnisphere what a what an unbelievable tool um, so that plus Keyscape there's one other new instrument as well we've got this uh, Korg Triton which has just just been released and I already had the Legacy Collection so I was able to get this on on um, on upgrade discount and um, it sounds fantastic I've coveted the Korg Triton for many a year and it's basically everything every version of, of the, the Triton plus all of its expansion packs and you get it all in this monster instrument um, so I was just having a, a fiddle around with it on on the day I bought it and I just this kind of there's a, it's a saxophone it's a combi so you've got a saxophone as the main sound but you've also got that classic Korg sweeping synth thing what a beautiful sound that is so at the end of the song, um, once the guitar solo's finished, I wanted a coda, really. And as I keyed up that, that instrument and, and started playing it for the first time, I was instantly put in mind of um, Ron's piece from uh, Rendezvous by Jean-Michel Jarre. At the end of the, the album, there's this most sublime saxophone solo, one of the most beautiful saxophone solos you'll ever hear if you've never heard the end of rendezvous go and go and listen to it it's absolutely stunning i believe that the anecdote goes that this was the first piece of music that was supposed to be played in space um and i think the the um the guy who was going to play the piece of music uh, was actually killed on the um in the columbia disaster so it's it's really really poignant what an amazing beautiful beautiful piece of music and it's got this kind of saxophone sound so we finish off the the song with a little a little saxophone coda <laughs> I'm I'm basically just going to spend the whole time complimenting myself on this video because I'm really really happy with the song. If I can get this mixed um, and get those harmonies added to the song, this is this is where I'm starting. This is my this is going to be my first complete piece of music. It was head it was well neck and neck between this and Shades of Blue and Snowfall, which was going to make it. And I've just become increasingly enthusiastic with this song I, I am obsessed with it at the moment so I'm going to make a real push to get this one done a couple of days ago I did all the routing for the drums so I'm now sending each of the drum sounds to its own channel and you can see them all here but at the moment they're just completely flat I don't think I've mixed them at all there you go there they all are all these green faders all at naught or all, all basically ready to be mixed so at the moment the drum sound is just like oh there's i've just pulled one down a little bit there but it's essentially just as it's coming out of the two instruments machine and groove agent are chucking all of those sounds there's something like 29 tracks of drums it sounds unbelievable as i'm saying it now but i think i think that's how many we've got so all of that needs mixing very excited to do that because that will obviously again really help to transform the sound and the final thing to mention is the bass guitar what the hell have we got two bass tracks for what goes on you ask well it's the same bass line exactly duplicated so one of them is doing this a thick fat sub and then exactly the same bass line just copied down onto a second track doing this so 
basically sculpted the two EQ curves. This one has got everything chopped, um, starting at 200 and then a hard, hard chop at about 130, 140. And the other one is the other way around. You get all the all the the, the sub stuff and then nothing beyond two hundred. So the two of them cross over and combine pretty nicely. I wanted to have independent control of all the stuff at the at the low deep woolly end, and then a little bit more fine tuning control over the over the stuff at the top. Now I've not got the crossover perfect yet and there are a couple of notes that seem to be like disproportionately loud. I need to figure out the physics of what's going on here and exactly what I've done. Um, I know that it's okay to do this, to duplicate channels, but I think you've got to be quite controlled in ensuring that no individual track, oh sorry, the two tracks aren't both combining too much and, and making a note that's much louder than it should be. So a little bit more fine tuning, but I'm really happy with the sound. I think that that splitting of the responsibilities of, over the two tracks and really having a, a greater degree of control. I think there are actually different presets. Uh, in this one, we've got, uh, what is it? It's a Fender 59 bass man. They, they might be the same, let's see. Live, di live discovery, what's this one? Yeah, there you go, an orange AD30, which I might not even be a bass amp, I don't know. It just sounds good. So there we are. That's Hummingbird as it stands at the moment, and big push for the finish line now. I think um, I'm all in on this one. I want to get this song finished, polished, mastered, whatever that means. That's an entire thing I need to figure out. What does that mean? I suppose I'm going to have to look into the whole... Um, uh, monitoring it in mono and making sure that I just don't have horrible phase issues and th there's an entire area of technical discovery for me to make that um, I am completely ignorant of at the moment so that's all very exciting all, all to be discovered but I wanted to give you this snapshot harmonies cracking absolutely spot on uh, drums sounding really good but utterly unmixed so you've, we've got a snapshot of that before I've really started to drill in and figure out how they're all supposed to blend together and, um, and make a cohesive whole. And the, the cleaned up and improved bass line. I've not even dealt with the, the guitar solo, that's poor. Um, let's just have a, a, a quick listen of the, of the guitar solo all on its own. Why not? <laughs> Phase. Let's have a look at the phase. Steinberg stock phaser. Awesome. the slide down at the end I don't know what do you think is it does it sound good or does it sound cheesy I'm right on the fence really difficult one but really excited hope you like it please let me know if you do hit subscribe and if you uh, ask for notifications which are completely free you'll find out when the next version of the song comes out as we as we approach our our thrilling first complete song in the one man and his songs project so awesome. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.